Precious series. Uh, this evening we have Simon Frommenweiler, who is uh, actually with us this whole semester. Um, Simon uh, is a founding partner of the HHF out of Basel, and uh, he is an associate professor at the ENSA in Strasbourg, France. Um, we're really excited to have him this uh, semester. He's working on a project in Philadelphia with the studio on flexibility. Uh, and I first came across his work uh, as an image from the Jinhua uh, Cultural Park in China, um, very sweetly named the Red Dragon or Baby Dragon or something like this. And then a few years later saw the um, extraordinary but very simple pavilion he did for the pilgrimage site in Mexico. And since then he's done a range of projects from a art farm in upstate New York to a fashion house in Berlin. And I think the way he takes on both program, form, and materiality is really interesting. So welcome, Simon. Or is your So don't be afraid, you know, there are not so many people that we can sit almost together. So that's the entrance to the door. I would like to take you for an hour um, into our world, into our office, and to explain a little bit what we do and who we are. Uh, the lecture is called Unfinished, which is in the most recent time. And the Life of Events is a show which we are just having, which is going on right now in Munich, uh, which we call Unfinished at this time. So we can talk about our idea of unfinished and what, why um, we think this is an approach for us, at least for us, is important. Uh, but the pictures that show, there are a couple of spaces. The show is in way itself, unfinished, it can be changed, it can be just boards and models which are laid out. Um, for where we come from, Switzerland, a lot of people consider uh, being in the land of milk and honey um, for uh, a lot of different reasons, also for architecture and construction. Uh, there's a boom going on for, for many, many years uh, in building, and there's still some labor tradition of, of softness, which is about to get lost. That would be electric, for example, like the African um, This is our background, and that's also where you have to understand where we come from to somehow try to get out of it. These are my two partners, the Simon Hartman, Philo Helmer, myself. Our team is about 20 to 30 um, architects, designers, interns, journalists um, uh, from all different places we have uh, about 11 different languages. Um, this is our office studio. It's an old ice cream factory which we have refurbish and that's how it looked when we came in when I came in first so I came in and just got an ice cream here and this is a very nice uh, studio as uh, also brown because it's one of these brands where each children in Boston has a, an emotional relationship because it's the one that's that that's that and the ice cream that you get when you get it the students all have very fond memory of the dance which for us is a very good start so that's a soon ice cream there. So that's how what we, you know, this sort of custom-made suit which we could, which we could refurbish and, um, you know, fit to our needs. I will go through it and that's, um, to understand a little bit where we come from. It's, unfortunately, it's really shaky because it's just taken by the iPhone and the hand you don't get sick. It's <laughs> very shaky video. But this is midday, Switzerland. Um, we hear the bell ringing. Um, this is not vacation, it's not Sunday. It's like literally no one on the street. And it's, um, it's this uh, extremely calm uh, environment where I mean, everybody somehow happy to be and it's a little bit like in LA. And you will also see, I mean, we are close to an LA home, and when you go back into that, this is like the only small industrial building in that living. 
and um, so we could just we just painted it and we used what was there and we um, had a couple of a cut outs in the, in, the, in the existing building and we just put in pop in front. So you see, you still see you know the, the tiles. Um, we just painted the thing. We uh, um, we needed a place which was in a very representative way we work and how we feel. This was extremely important for us, and it's it's really it's a place where um, you know people can. Now it looks sort of half clean, but I mean it's very often it's very messy. People do models, spray, and and um, it's just a sort of a, a sort of a tiny microcosmos in this in this sort of strange um, condition called Switzerland, which we somehow have to break to be able to survive. Um, very important to do. Um, I collaborate with Cook in the program here and have a topic I learned about Cook. Um, and so this is uh, it's a little bit long, but I just I want to explain it so you get an impression nevertheless, and then we try to we just try to use all different kind of um, examples or mock-ups for our buildings, or we even have either loans or Clients who paid us with art because they, at the end, wouldn't want or couldn't afford our fees, though they were at the time very good, the very small, and to say. So, this is then you know, a lot of models, lots of uh, Uh, 
all the people who are trying to be more interesting and better in the zoo of architecture. Or like a project which we are just about to start construction, carriages in the park, uh, uh, sort of a different voice in the park, um, which uh, is due to start this month. But now to get back to the history and how in our approach and of this idea of confluence. How we got to start, we, we were uh, able to collaborate on a large um, housing project together with two older architects, one of them being my father, which was a developed project. It was not a competition, it was a commercial developed project and a really tough experience learning by doing on a large scale. And so it was like uh, villas and here's some half, half fancy interiors, which were okay, but nevertheless, it was a really difficult thing for us because most of the things which we somehow dreamt of um, at, um, at, at this age were not happening. But the only thing that somehow the developer got was this underground garage. So that's the where we could suddenly, we really started to realize the power of, of the structure and the power of, of the roughness in the main structure, where um, this sort of large infrastructure on the <laughs> hidden road, he somehow he, it was not, it was invisible and he didn't see it. So we could just do whatever. And so what we propose is that a, a large underground road with some small skylines, which are, which is just covered with, with and filled up with, with grass and land, so that um, the, the skylines, so that if you already force the people to use the underground garage every day, that there's a visual connection on daylight, and which resulted in this very strong and, um, and sort of almost like in a, in, in a fish whale stomach. You know? And so these are the, these, these small skylights and which are great in sort of hills between this um, garden city which is on top of it. And we've always direct connections then to the to the uh, the Indians. So the, this was like a lesson to be learned for us so that it's okay the power of the structure but either they um, do and build the structure exactly as it as it was meant to be, or it's a totally different project. And another thing which was extremely important is that we very early mentioned, um, uh, mentioned that project before, was the experience of working afar in a totally different cultural environment in China. We had no clue what is going on. It was a huge transformation going on. This was clear, but we were not specialists. We had like no, no clue. But we were young and we were lucky enough, I have to say, to be recommended by Hesek Lamont and there's, a, there's this um, riverside along that river, and there were a couple of, also, you, some people you may know, Yang Yachun, for example, and Wang Xu, who got the Christopher Grants afterwards. And so all these young people, here's Wang Xu, Michael Morrison, for example, um, uh, who found together to, to, um, to build that strange uh, project for a public park with different folks. We met a very important man for our career, but also for our um, approach in architecture. Was either way, we met him there for the first time. Um, and um, this is, you know, coming from Europe. And these, of course, are the things which we are drawn to, and in, in a way, also interested in um, this beautiful garden. Of things. This is a public park there in the city. Um, this artificial stone, artificial nature. This is also what we wanted to try to create in our folly, in our playground for children. Um, so we tried to focus on that very cheap material and somehow to take advantage of the fact that labor is not such a big an issue that, unfortunately, I have to say, that labor is, of course, cheap. It's exactly the other way around. So we were trying to make something extremely complicated with a very simple material. So for the first time, we realized that the communication of the project is a very important part of the design of the project itself. So um, we came up with a, a number of, of openings which could be combined in, a, in sort of an endless pattern. And we had uh, an idea of, of how these people would actually build that model on site. So, the, so it was more or less like a, a book of how to build a one-to-one -one model. And so we came up and we did this sort of unfolded project which actually got built like this on the side. So they just came, they had to follow our cartoonish uh, description of, of, of construction and um, came up with this quite complicated and at the end sort of archaic um, architecture, which of course could almost only be done 
I mean, it's extreme. It, it looks at the end very simple, but the thickness of this um, hollow concrete at some, at some point is like two meters thick. And the, the basic idea is that there are these openings which are all overlapping, so that the children, which Elon Musk still claims that they were just playing and he didn't tell them. I'm not sure if it's really true, but it doesn't really matter. So the thing is that they can climb and climb up because there is always like an opening again on the other side. So that's the idea. And what is also very nice, it's in the scale of children. So if I stand here, and um, like this. And um, which is funny because when we went there last time, most of these uh, park features and park um, structures would not work, especially because they had a problem. A couple of them were quite popular, the ones without any problem. And this is especially popular by lot birds would try to hide. It's a young married couple who don't want to be seen in the park, you know? which is difficult because it's a very um, um, popular backdrop for, for the uh, newlyweds. Another mm. project which we um, did in Berlin is this um, um, the Labels Fashion Center, which is uh, which are showrooms for, for, for professional um, fashion brands. So it's not that it's not a public building; it's an industrial building in, in a very strange. Um, surrounding on the river Spree. This is exactly where it's also like this art field, it's where the, the, the wall was in the middle of the wall. So this was in the east part, these old port buildings, which fortunately are, were still existing. And that's how what we found there on site. And the, the competition was to break these showrooms for this fashion brand, um, which is offering the showrooms, this is for example, Uber Boss. And this quite beautiful old um, um, harbor building with these spaces, which I think probably most of fashion people like. It's like this, you know, the open technical shafts, the docks, which you see, very flexible structure, and, and this very iconic old building. I mean, they would have liked to have exactly the same. So for us, it was the idea when we got this footprint for the competition, 40 by 40, this very unelegant cube. Which we had to fill, it was clear that we wanted to have like a mark stone, sort of a non oriented, extremely heavy, heavy building, which is where you find that structure. And so that's when we started to look through different ways of coming up with a structure, which is also a great thing, some sort of um, flexible space, and which are just breaking and also a very iconic facade. At some point, we would come up with the idea of, of having two different arches which is one allowing to sort of a spatial arch, and the second one which is allowing for all the dots and all the technical shafts to cross. So this was um, how the basic idea of, of, of the space, which is great in the facade, and which is also great in the interior space. And you know, it can also be described quite easily, and that's how we imagined that it could be built. And this is an image of the rendering at the time. At the same time, we wanted to have a facade which is in a way structural and showing that um, partially, but also like a fabric, like a, like a rope, um, reflecting a little bit this idea of, of, um, of, uh, of this fashionness. And these are 10 meter um, concrete elements prefab, and um, it's a very simple technique because it's hiding everything, which is like from security, from plans, everything which is not to be seen, and that's how it's now there on, on the water with a, a main entrance and a garden roof terrace. If you enter it on the ground, there's a, a sort of a multi purpose um, event hall on the ground. It's also the only space where we have a different type of art, which is allowing them for different types of, of uses. And upstairs, it's this 10 meter grid of, of um, of these um, themes, uh, of this concrete structure, which is then, this is for example Puma. They, of course, with their corporate identity, were very happy because, in a way, it was quite similar to what they offered. But how did, it was just corn shell, how they, the people then fill it up and how they use it is very different. Some of them just came with their uh, uh, hangers and just put them in. And this is the, this roof terrace is just shows. We had some money left. Because it was actually a really cheap building, the, in general it would be called show type, which is the show uh, stair. And with a shipbuilder, we could build a stair which is linking all these 
a different space to get. And again, we adapt it the same. There is a circle, which is uh, a rotating, and we again just distract, just took away twice the same shape. So it's like a sort of a, a language for, for each of, of the building which we are trying to test. So in the middle, we have the central spine, but in reality, we could get rid of it because it's really self supporting steel, which with this heavy thing on the paint got paint from the people who built it, and which is now creating this quite beautiful space, linking this interior um, spaces together. And it's quite narrow, dark, and you go in it, and then somehow it's like sticking your head when you go out. So, this is this idea. We have one of the things we, ideas travel. And uh, so, it's this idea, and I have one idea which is um, important in our office is the idea of ready made. But ready made can mean also a lot of different things. Also, the idea of like ready made of ideas that we can go into one. From one project to another. This is the Ulta del Dalgena project, which I need to mention before, this view platform, which is at the end of a, of a long journey where literally millions of people around the Easter time and around the, the Holy, Holy um, Week around Easter are walking. So different architects and artists and graphic designers were invited by the town of Gerbao and Derek Delton, um, young and um, architects from from Spain and so this trail from Ameca to Tata de Arende, which is in the state of Jalisco, that's where the city is Guadalajara. So you see this is an extremely popular um, route and some people are carrying here, some people are carrying a Maria to the end and these are some of the very beautiful approaches for Tatana de Bar, some sort of open space, um, um, highway, if uh, unfortunately built misunderstanding because the idea was that it have something of looking out so that the path, the trail should have gone here, but they um, sort of have half open church by um, this incumbent by which are also at the street of Switzerland, Luis Alvete, which did a couple of shelters where people just can, you know, put their mattress and wash themselves and sleep for a couple of hours before they go on. But this is what we day and night, so this really this is a constant flow of people. Very beautiful rain of white um, painted concrete. You see how large the people are. So really, uh, the installation by Derek Duncan or by Rental Alejandro Arena, this sort of open book where you can walk in on the Maria <coughs> and walk into the middle. Our idea was that we have a um, that we create like one loop so that people can come, they can either sit down or they can go up. And continue. So that they can come up here, sit down, and once look around your own shoulder, and then you see again where you have to continue, and um, that's it, and then you go on. At the time, we were working on just finished this project in Lagos, Berlin, and we were um, somehow very interested in this moment where these arches are coming together on the corner, and we suddenly realized that this is like the most interesting. When the moment when it becomes three-dimensional. And so that we thought, if we have something which is a loop, and we have this idea of loop, can we not come up with a structure which is, which is like evolving, which is like almost rotating? So we came up with this idea of um, four circles, which are creating this um, sp two spine pairs, the stairs which are going up. So which is, in the, which is exactly at this moment, and this was then the object. And whereas in the baby picture, which we saw before, we had 11, 11 different form boards which we had to be put together to build that one-to-one -one mock up Here, all the um, form work is actually the same. So we're trying to reduce um, the complication of, of the building uh, to the maximum. So just by having different um, dynamics in the circles, the, the openings, of course, change, even though we always use the same form board. And so that's how it looks then on site. And astonishingly enough, I think this probably the building or the infrastructure which looks the closest in, in, in build um, to the to some kind of virtual reality. Um, and we were really astonished and, and, and surprised to see that built in such an accurate and a straight and forward way. Um, I'm showing you a small extract of the movie which we did together, all together with this 
Mazuta, Mexican government, which this was shown with some other work at the Biennale in Venice uh, two years ago, where he <coughs> was following a group of people for the whole week. So some moments are more busy, some are less busy, but you see that um, the, the one of the traditions is that you somehow like proof or show that you have been an interest or an interest that's lost. So it gets really taken over by the public. So people pay they have spray hands, spray hands for them. So they spray their family name and number or they, they grave it or they just leave a trace that they have been here. Which is, this was really at the beginning, now it's getting more and more colorful. And really, the way we mentioned it is a super colorful, so almost, I mean, people saying, oh, that's so, such a big thing now, it's, 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 it's getting dirty. But I think it's exactly what this, what this is about, it is taking over. And um, so you see this bridge situation where on that point of the, of the hill, you have a, a fantastic view from where you came from. Again, where you have where you have coverage, which is the next step. Can you make this turn up the sound a little bit? which we would call, in a way, an approach of no design, is a building in upstate New York, which we did in collaboration with Iowa Way, which is called Art Farm, which is a, a very beautiful piece of land. Uh, it's about an hour and a half from New York City, upstate on Taconic Highway, uh, maybe 20 minutes from Deal Beacon. There's a main house, and the building was already under construction, so there's a main house, and this is um, a showroom and, and storage for art that we have almost no no funding and no budget. So we were looking around at some point we found these three engineered um, steel elements which can easily put together and uh, which are quite cheap, usually for agricultural purposes needed or for industrial purposes. And we were discussing um, also by way how could we come up with something because on that land there was already a different type of art and land art scattered around on that in the park. And then we thought, at some point we thought, uh, it's, a, it's a linear element, it could be quite interesting. And so we talked to the, to the company who was um, producing that, and they started, we didn't draw, so we didn't design, there's nothing we designed, there's not one goal which we somehow designed. And we just um, talked uh, how they should be built together. So there are actually three platforms in the, in the, in the ramp which is following that following that, um, the, 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 the curve of the, of the, of the hill. That's how it's, how it's laying there. And also on the inside, we just um, insulated it with this very cheap bath insulation with a PVC cover. And so that when you now in, um, we have only three windows to the north. It's actually quite bright, it's only and bright. But it has a very beautiful relationship to the outside because we somehow feel the countryside and you feel the you feel the um, the nature just by walking up and down the hill, and so um, it has a strange, I would say, influence on people. Um, some people all want to start to sing, others want to start to make yoga because it is extremely filled with uh, space where you just you hear the, the, the birds a little bit, and because everything is slightly glossy. All the materials is actually quite bright, so this is in the storage part, and this is the sort of in the, in the, in the immediate um, back spine, which is a, a, at the same time sort of a <coughs> showing hall, but also like the infrastructure element of the whole thing. This is then um, how it looks from outside, and that's the detail of the three engineered uh, metal, which with the amplitude is actually quite 
quite large because it's done for, for heavy snow loads. And of course, I mean, this is more for this is Donald Trump. I mean, it cannot be, um, all these things cannot be seen without the influence of, of, um, of work and the people like uh, Donald Trump and all the minimalists, his artists. Also, this, um, this, oh, this Marfa. This is another building which we that just let uh, me show one picture, which we at the same time built, where we almost literally try to, to somehow relate the need or the, the demand for, for this young collectors to, to somehow relate to the contemporary art. But on the inside, it was an art story extremely sort of a, um, more American country house. And the same time, we were lucky enough to build a second house, which is like a bird, um, a sort of a guest house, which is like a bird jumping off, off the hill with a um, uh, Y-shaped uh, interior with an interesting space where you always see out different spaces and different views at the same time. A very different building, but a different approach and a different understanding of, of our idea of unfinished is a housing project we are just about to finish or on the ground floor that the building is already finished in Basel, which is a building which is, if you have already been there, which is in the, close to the Milwaukee's campus, is a um, strange closed um, gate at the community city, which is um, but um, uh, <coughs> um, which all the all the architects have from a building. This is now almost finished. However, as a one, this is Sama. Um, so there are all these buildings like Frank Gehry did, like they have been in Boulder underground, and it's so, um, sort of campus building, and it was an old labor, um, more or less um, industrial area. And the land we, we found or had four different sites, four different old houses. One of them was in a very bad shape, so we had to take this out. The back is new. And to gain some space, we took out the old circulation spaces. And we just put one new circulation in the, in the back, with the result that now on each floor you have an interesting combination from um, old and new. So this is actually one bit became like one bit with different apartments and not one not two apartments are exactly the same. So the idea was having, they were redoing that part and it was like trying to have an artificial sort of um, green space or tree which is um, making the connection from the park. Uh, we were inspired by this bamboo structures or this is an industrial entrance in London and this is how it looks today. So these are aluminium um, elements and aluminium facade on that restaurant which is about to be, be finished and um, so which is done in a way that it always goes out so each you know, each balcony also has the, the possibility to have the view along the road and to see into the, the, the campus and onto onto that new park in the back it's it's just the aluminium and, and the wood i think it's leach uh, large large it's the wood and um, um, that's how it looks and with this sort of Trying to, to leave as much also in the garden of of of, 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 um, of, of the existing elements. And what we like very much that we just offered um, this space, and people would start to squat in and do their own, do their own um, um, extension of roofs and use it in in a, in, a, in a very different all in a different way. And if you see, this is a restaurant on the ground floor. It's the angle. It's now this new, a new entrance with this one new elevator and staircase in the corner. And here is the restaurant, which will soon be finished. It gets a little bit painted, but that's more or less it. It was an old, uh, old um, gymnasium training floor, which still has the marks on it. And then they, 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 they were um, separated by long and short marks. Also how they make it out. So it's actually funny. First we thought you would see still like for the basketball and everything half the roof, but it was already taken apart. So that's how it is. They're in reality they're, they're in green. So it looks quite funny. And this then the entrance if you go into this corner situation where all before there were the, the toilets and the bathrooms and we still we kept all the building openings so that you at night you, you still feel that just put into the corner. So that's the situation with um, 
with the, with the new part and um, uh, where you can either have a very large apartment um, where you feel references. And people were actually being, uh, could choose where they wanted to put, uh, to put um, the kitchen. There were three locations, for example, where the kitchen could be, so they could, could all choose. They also could choose the materials of the walls, where they wanted to have the subdivisions, if they should be in, in wood or should it be in gypsum wall or should it be plastic. Um, we all considered it still our approach. We didn't control it at the end, but we all only controlled was the, the concrete work and all the rest of it was then done by the people itself. And that's how it's been connecting to the old part, for example, where you can see um, the old existing house, the old roof and the stuck. And that's the concrete which is going on top here. Or in the, in the uh, top of the bottom floor, um, you can see the interiors were uh, very differently used. Uh, this is in, in a way rougher, a young family. Um, which um, just Each of the apartments, each of the outdoor spaces are right, always extremely specific, extremely different. And what at least makes me very happy about that structure, um, the people who live there are extremely different from each other. They're from artists to young students to, to theater people. Um, of course, all people who have a very conscious idea about living, but the, the, somehow the story of life and the way that people live is extremely different. In the way the structures that just all these different approaches, you know, and um, at least this for us or for my was one of the important points for us. Um, another project which we could almost um, uh, succeed in, in convincing the client is that it was in Zurich, uh, a mixed use commercial and housing project with a, a strange program with um, all different kinds of communal livings and um, studios. So the idea uh, we had was coming up with a very rigid sort of courtyard uh, building with small studios 
could be built, but you can also combine them on different floors to larger communal living. So it's not like some sort of large, um, almost IKEA shelf, which you can use with different, fill up with different, different um, usages, different types of apartments. So this would be, for example, for the small unit, the core unit with the shaft. Uh, if it's 12, 12 meter interior space, a uh, uh, small balcony on one side, a small balcony on the other side, a larger one, which is here, the, the, the circulation, a slight overheight for it to, to offer different type of uh, interiors. So this would, they would be then uh, in a row, and for example, uh, we offer them three different types. One of them would be sort of a young student or architecture studio with, with um, uh, a working space, and maybe on the other side, uh, um, a bedroom slash living room, or something where you can use the overhead and use this part for storage uh, in, in, and break some sort of uh, slight um, height difference, which is to some um, um, privacy towards the circulation, uh, which is a which we imagine could be something like this with the bathroom and the, the bedroom or like a more conventional type of living with the kitchen unit and the, which would then look like, a, like any type of wet painted apartment. Um, this was unfortunately uh, by one word, again we have a lot of these cases where we almost were there and then we couldn't really do it, but it was still an important project for, for testing something we were working on. A totally different way of unfinished is this very small, cheap, private, um, um, it's in the family house where a family with three kids was somehow they had the dream they somehow wanted to have a boy from us and they couldn't really afford it. We did three different proposals and um, all of them were so <coughs> expensive so we had to find the local builder which is doing green family houses. And what we did, we just, we had to find someone who's like open enough to put the things together in a slightly different way. So. We just they took whatever material we were thinking is interesting. They had they had concrete and they had wood, and they had some okay windows. And so we had a very simple plan with a, with a concrete stair in the middle, and um, two, uh, creating these two different type of spaces. And with a certain second layer of wood, which is then on the outside, um, just creating some sort of, sort of cold spaces, which is then used for you see it. Um, these were just some snapshots when we were looking at it now. Because we didn't even follow the construction. We just gave him the plan and, um, and we gave him the materials and um, some instructions how to put it together. And that's then how we could do it. And in the inside, it's really just this raw, untreated wood and uh, concrete walls. That's it. So that's enough to the um, couple of tries we could then um, put it together. A very different project, which I, I, I think I have another, that's the second last, um, is a project where we work on a lot, um, um, which is this um, aquarium project, which was, would have been, and again, it's by one half vote, uh, the city wanted to have our project by, by one half vote, we lost it at the end, um, which is, um, so it would have been the first tower aquarium and soon. Um, uh, in the world. The idea is that um, if you create a public plaza, you would come in, like in a, in a circle, you go down, and you get your ticket, and then you go up in a large elevator, and from there with the penguins, and you go around all the different kinds of pools and all the different kinds of um, uh, zoo-related um, topics. So there's a mangrove garden, these are the different pools. And that's then how you would go go down and how you would um, relate to this to this program, which is relating in extremely interesting sections and extremely interesting situation where you walk and then you see one sitting come to the fish and then you see you into the big pool of the shark and then you again see some other people looking down at the same time, same time or you see onto the onto the onto the and the dip onto the sea with this more corals and a very interesting and very interesting crazy section where you really would start on top of it and walk. These are the tubes where people walk and all the rest is either service, zoo, or um, or technical stuff. So 
the left hand cross section where you see there's the, the entrance level where you come from the city and then you go in where you see ones for the first time go up and then you would go up and go down if this um, uh, public covered plaza where you see the uh, <coughs> With the shark for the first time, but again, this sort of idea of an extremely archaic space, um, which then could be closed off if needed, and this sort of, I think, you know, it was a lot of discussion about the project if, it, if it's not, if it's tough enough for the city. Because the thing is, in, in, this was in Basel, it was a big competition with Saadid and all the, all the big guys, and um, the thing is that, that the Sumis are very important. It's one of the one of the places where um, families give their money. So they're extremely powerful and they're a beautiful zoo. If you ever should be in you should check it out. Not only with your kids, it's also worthwhile going there. And this would be like the like the, the first markstone of in, in the city of Sumis, which actually starts here in the park and then maybe you know, after after ten minutes walk it really begins. And um, the brief was clear that they wanted that. And at the end, some of the families, uh, Protestant families in Basel, we have, which is at the same time um, a fantastic thing to have because we have this tradition of mercenaries, a lot of uh, rich people giving out for affection and for, for, for art. But at the same time, they feel bad about being rich. So at the end, they were saying, oh no, it's too ostensible, it's too clear, it's too we don't want to have. A buried for something buried on the ground now. The project is like this and most on the ground, which I think is a real, real thing. So, that was a, a tough one to digest. And then now we were very lucky and, and found to win something which is in the row of things that I think bring a lot of things together, which we, um, which we are ever working on. This is also maybe the relationship to. To what we now do in the studio and what we will do in the studio is to try to test how specific and how daring and interesting can a structure become when we have an open future, when we don't really know what the future will bring. And, um, so this is a large development area of the industrial area in Basel, which maybe you know because this has a general bit of studies for branch bits of that, which which are very um, and one of the ideas to have sort of a Broadway street in the middle. And um, this is the shower lobby, as you already have been in here in Boston. So it's an interesting place with a lot of interesting projects and, and, uh, which are happening here, just a few. So the, the, the task was to, there's now some, um, some housing projects happening. So big is, is building on top of that transit building, refurbishment and the new big housing project on that. And so the more, which just now built here their foundation, which is a housing project, the first housing project there, with their own archives, which is a sort of museum, and shadow, we have museum archive. And so, because there is such a transition um, um, phase for that area, they have this parking structure here, and they didn't really know, do we need that, or this doesn't have been twice or three plus days? Uh, we know that for now we need it, but we don't know how it's going to be in the future. So um, they had a very open competition. What we suggest is just that we keep it. That's that we we just have a sort of a small beautification renovation. We keep it, and we build a large structure, which is like this sort of crocodile on top of it, which is offering all different types of, um, <coughs> of, of um, possibilities to evolve and to be. Um, it, it become like a generator, sort of an open, open structure, non isolated generator for that space. So in the model you see that's the, that's the existing one, which can be taken away if they don't need it anymore. And that's the new. So there's still a train running through, and what we, what we propose is, a, is this monster, which is almost 300 meters long, with these two ramps leading up. So it becomes like a um, vertical open part of the city with uh, lots of temporary and, and, and also building structures on top and in and underneath it and um, with an idea of connecting the whole building through the site um, with, for um, individual transportation and for parking and also where you can drive up with your car onto the roof for service but also with the bike, so the blue is bike and pedestrian where you can go up into the ramp 
Um, one of the ideas, because it's so large, this has been the view from the, from the shell market, that we should have no back, back stacks. It should always be like a front and main entrance from wherever you see and look at it. So this would be, um, this is going to be a hotel, a motel with a sports gym and that you went home. And then it's always at some part you have again, you know, again, um, um, parking space. So, um, which is then, of course, I mean, also these and all these projects, I mean, this is clear, it's always like testing different models, like redoing and again changing the form. Um, what was this drain shape was clear that we needed it because we we have to keep this drain, which are going to, that's why we have to integrate this sort of bridge structure, which is going on top of it. And what we always wanted to have, like that space, vertical space, sort of this, you know, this Tuckenheim moment, where, we on, where all the things come together on the ground, on top, where all the um, movements of connecting space were together. That's one part. And the other part I want to emphasize is the idea of, of curating the usage. Right? That we propose a management or a curator, sort of a well-known um, cultural guide. Um, and we came up with different types of usage which we can fill up. So one is would be health and food, one is cultural and events, then what we call well-being and then um, um, service and uh, night for staying overnight. So from the ground floor makes a need until the roof where we have a large farm for farming, which actually is already in the site. So it's not really, they're already in the site. They're already selling um, fish and, and, and products in the, in the biggest Swiss retailer. Um, so this was one of them. So all the rest, which is white, is parking. So these are the units. And this would then be, for example, on the ground floor, different built-in, um, open, open, um, um, permanent and non-permanent pop-up stores and restaurants. And we somehow, during the phase, and I think that's also eventually why we won the competition, we really went there to, to people all of this and to, to try to convince them to come in that building. So actually, for each program we have, we propose to propose two uses or two bills. So um, they already came up with their ideas and proposals that they wanted to open it. This was obviously quite a uh, convincing uh, way to do it. So, for example, in the, this phase, you would have, still have the, the old part, you know, you would maybe paint it black, then come up with some first shops. I uh, think this thing can also be ripped away. You know? So, this is um, self supporting. And for the different uses, the only thing we had to do, I mean, fire we already had. What do we have? We have everything in that building, with the exception that we have a slide overhead. But this is still much more, much cheaper um, than um, in comparison to the whole thing. This, this 50 centimeters, which we have more, so is not so much. So on the back side now, looking from the side where we saw this tower of heads the moment, there's a new, the new art school. They're moving in this week. They're suddenly like from one day to another, they have a thousand students. So we offered a series, together we did this with Totodec 1 from Berlin, a series of, of sports um, fields and sports uh, and pop-up stores, which um, and are not stores, but I mean like, uh, like food groups and stuff, so that the people and the students can come and play there. And what was extremely important for this idea of like this urban machine, which is at the beginning already a public ground floor and immediately a public group where they're free. Three um, programs can be offered. Um, this is one of the references, which in a way is obviously you know the pro, uh, this, this Lingotto building in the old Fiat um, um, production in, in, in Torino. And so there's this, this ramp going up, ending in some sort of, I said, this is sort of traveling ideas and sort of put the Lino moment where you go up, you can either bike up, you can walk up, and at the end, you, um, you end in a, in, a, in, a, in a viewing platform to overview that transition of that area. So this, you see all the, this would be the parking. Yeah? So here we have, we have elevators, we have all the shafts, we have all the vertical elements we need, in which are close enough that you can also build units. This would be the hotel, um, hotels, which we a drop off in that way. Yeah? And this is in the roof, where we developed an uh, urban farm together with this farming company which is doing that now in a couple of cities. And uh, we've sort of a park and the event all of this 
in this um, um, Hume platform at the end where we mentioned this is like one of the first elements to be built in that area. So that this is one of these moments where maybe you can look at while having a break at, at the transition of that area. And I end with uh, some pictures of, I guess, you know, Sophia Army, and some pictures of us sitting in our and cooking. And uh, as I said, eating is an important part of our life and our, uh, the way we work. Started by saying we want to build and introduce the topic of um, formal, formal pragmatism, formalistic pragmatism. Yeah. So now that you are building, do any of those parameters change? You want to build, you want to be global, you want to collaborate. I'm sure you want to do all of those things, but is there more nuance to that now? It's tough enough to keep it up, and it's already long enough. I feel it's really long enough to be there. Right? That I can say that we have now been um, in, together, we three, um, for 11 years. And um, I think uh, I consider myself really lucky to be able to part of this show and do this different. I mean, it's like a, it's like a relationship, like any relationship, like the second marriage. You know? So it's all the high highs and lows. Which I think that's already, and I feel very lucky to have. Um, maybe, maybe I'll be a little more specific. So it seemed like in the early work and even in the current work, uh, you're always part of a curated collection, right? From Jinhua to the pilgrimage site to even um, some of the later competitions or the adjacency to the No Barless projects. And I guess I wonder. Mm, out, which seems a little bit contradictory to the pragmatism argument that we would do because we want to build, we'll build anything, anywhere. And you showed a few of those kinds of projects, but maybe more in the realm of this kind of part of a larger curated collection that is clearly a different, um, uh, has a different uh, architectural profile, let's say, than the pragmatism of we want to build, we'll build anything. Um, I mean, group projects were only two of them. Just the old town of them, the chain one, the fish one. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, um, our way or our understanding of pragmatism was just that we, that the focus we had while we were do that. You know, by maybe all the studios, we have a tradition of competitions in, in Europe, or in, basically in Switzerland. Each school, if it wants to be a new, make a new building, has to make a competition. So <clears throat> for young firms, it's in a way easier to get into, into touch with, with the real world of construction than it would be in the US. So, but while other, I mean, students and my colleagues from, from maybe from ETH would go and do competitions about uh, um, whatever program was offered to them, uh, we were just trying to go, and I mean, most of them were like financially ridiculous and disaster for them. And we were just trying to go out and do whatever small project we could get. You know? And this, but then some of them became part of a group. I mean, the group project was, of course, I mean, not something you can guide. You know? This just happens. You know? And then um, because of this, then one starts and then you become friends, and then in a way, in a way, it goes on. You know? Um, I'm interested to go back to the, the theme of the unfinished and looking at the quality of your work which is rough and raw in many cases um, that ends up being the finish of the project also 
But we're also learning that to keep a concrete wall raw uh, means to save. Because as we know, I mean, at least I'm, I'm providing you a little bit of the local context, so you can sort of uh, uh, provide your context for us. But um, given that materials are relatively economical in proportion to the labor that goes into the crafting uh, of work, are you confronted with this contradiction and with this problem as you under detail and you kind of under finish your buildings but then are, uh, are cornered into the, in, into the challenge of getting the syntax and the, and the conditions absolutely architectural and perfect as they appear to be, uh, forcing the budget back up or how do you uh, what are some of the challenges in doing minimalism, basically, uh, is my question. Um, I think one of the main lessons we learned that what is expensive and what is cheap is culturally um, related. Right, you know? And it's just, it depends very much on what people know to do. Right? And uh, you, know, you said concrete, and this is saying concrete is just the most common and most cheap thing. You know? And what you see, all this concrete is like the industrial finish, you know? it's, we just said uh, we have um, different type of finishes, so from uh, one, two, three, four. Four is like the really refined, very uh, fine surface. What they, they are all um, number two. We don't even come to here. We didn't even tell them which direction they have to be put. We just is number two, and we don't care. The thing is, of course, once they know it's going to be visible at the end, they try to make it a little bit better, even though they just ask for the price of, of this finish of, of number two. That's one thing. Yeah. And for this four boxes building, which is just a one picture, which is a span frame construction in the outside New York, where first we were um, imagining that we could into a, a, a concrete building. And so that's also the how that was maybe also, you still see that in the design, you know, these sort of type of things that you have in concrete building. And then we asked the general contractor, and he came up with some sort of fancy number, right? which was totally, I mean, Crazy, and um, which when we were then we had to readapt it, for example, and then we did it. We still did, which is already quite um, uncommon for for a house where we we built a basement out of concrete. And then he built just the basement out of concrete, and the concrete is perfect. And I just he just wouldn't believe that the way he can deliver the concrete was the way we wanted to have it, and we were would have been perfectly happy with whatever we could come up with. Uh, this is only half the question. No? <laughs> 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 the second part was to uh, uh, Listen, I mean, uh, I, obviously I think that you know, what we do as architects is uh, uh, specify roughness. And uh, the crafting of roughness uh, ends up overwhelming contractors to the point that even those who uh, look economically end up. I'm just wondering if, if well, what is the other kind of work you have to do to maintain the stature of the buildings that you do? And uh, have you ever, have that ever escalated to the point of no return? And, you know, have, 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 have these contradictions, contradictions emerged in your practice? Yeah, of course they have. I mean, they do in every, I mean, guess in every I mean, in practice. And you have this experience with somebody things are turning out extremely different than you ever wanted to imagine to be. But I mean, one of the real problems which we have in Switzerland is we cannot build cheap. It's just impossible with all the codes and all the things we have and in terms of insulation, so you have not imagined. So for us, um, in a way you're right, you know, at the end, we always, that's also why I said, you know, we have to three, for this really simple, super cheap, um, um, small family house, which I just wanted to show exactly for that reason. And we imagine what would be uh, cheap building. But the thing is that, yeah, there's a boom. If then you ask for the contract for 100 or 200 square meters, the price is literally exactly the same. You no, know, it just doesn't care. And with, together with the code and together with the fact that people have, to have enough to build, it just doesn't, it doesn't change anything. You know? So, yes, it's always a fight, just leaving a lay way, which means this type of roughness really leads to a cheaper project. Or is it at the end just more work to have the, the image of the rough, which at the end is exactly the same price? And this is, of course, a constant fight. Right? It's 
not so easy to answer that. Sometimes it works out, sometimes not. This is a very practical question. Um, how old are you? Switzerland still extend you know, the, the Swiss architecture. So the question is, how do the young architects of Switzerland feel about this uh, recent contemporary history? I mean, I cannot answer for all of the answers. Actually. <laughs> 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 I can't answer for all. You know? um, and I have to say, the shadow is very long. Especially for us now, because it's becoming a problem. Shadow has a demo very long, and visually it's hard to run. Um, yeah, most of the things you ever imagine they have already done at the point, you know, or twice. And, um, and in a way, we also don't try, you know, we also claim, and we, we, I mean, our relations and our reference we give them are quite open. It's not that we try to come up with hiding that. We are somehow influenced by this or by that. You know, it's not possible. It's all out there. It's on each. I mean, you can Google it and we are daily and it's even there. It's constantly coming out. Um, but at the same time, of course, I mean, for us, we were in a, in a strange position, and that's also why we had to go out and do other things because we have like this generation of, of, of architects, which are like one and a half generations of Canadian. Suddenly there was a boom in Switzerland and they all had to build. You see, we have, we have practically not, not a lot of work in Switzerland, not a lot of work built. We had to go out. And because we just came a lot, couple of years too late, we actually to participate in that, in that building boom. Which for us, I have to say, uh, as you say, also for your case, not only of course, but also it was an advantage. We were in a way pushed out, you know, like if you do like that. Uh, um, jumping out in a, in a helicopter for the first time and, and you're afraid and people push you out. So it's like, that's a little bit how we felt and that's also how we maybe came up with all, we connected with other people in other situations, which in a way, we are not, I mean, we always, from outside people think that it's people in Swiss and it's a very typical Swiss group. We are somehow not really part of the Swiss gang and we're not really part of the Swiss gang. We're somehow a little bit the outside and we are quite happy. It's very really fascinating to see like the drawings for um, the project in China, um, how you actually draw the mold to create those poles, um, the the building the park. Um, so I'm really curious because um, um, my dad was a contra um, my dad is a contractor, so I, I'm been knowing a lot of like contractor stories in China. Um, and I think in China, there's like huge disjunction between architect and contractor. It's been an ongoing problem. 
um, but it's also like serving the efficiency. So um, in different culture, the role of architects are different. Um, so I'm really curious about like, because you really want to build internationally. Um, so one of the challenges would be, um, from my understanding, is how you grasp upon like the role of being an architect in different culture context. And I'm very curious about like how you adjust yourself um, in different cultural contexts and um, how you communicate with the contractor and the client um, in different cultural contexts. Yeah, I mean, that's what I, I think I mentioned before. When we come to a place, we're not specialists. Now, everybody knows it better than we do. That's not why we are there. Yeah? We, just, we always ask, well, can, can we contribute something? No, I mean, one of the topics of unfinished in a way is also the idea of, of, of not having a common, a common uh, form of threat. We are uh, specifically not trying to have some sort of um, formal, um, recognizable language. No? And of course, if you work abroad and you work with different people, and you um, have to um, get into their uh, way of building and to understand their culture, to, to I think, at least we think it's extremely interesting to get that and to try to figure out what actually they can build and what they somehow imagine. China is a special case. We have so many uh, big you know, started projects which were never finished and no comparison. This is, there have been a lot of cultural understandings in, in, in China. It's, I think it's a, um, um, sometimes you need the cultural translate. You know? In China, for this case, for many people, and most of us, this was either way. Uh, because um, we just have this idea of bringing people together and this sort of cultural and, and happily networking so that people come together and something new happens, you know? something starts. And this bringing people together for him is as important as the result. But we can work, if we work, we have either other architects we collaborate, and we do a lot of artists, other, also not, not only right away, or other architects, we have a lot of collaborations. So that's, that's, of course, then one part of doing that, you know, that uh, we share the authorship and then we, we just develop something together, which is also very extremely, I think, healthy for us, really, because it changed the role and changed the hat between we within, within the office all the time. You know? Because it's always, you always have to fight, you know, and to find, if you're three, you know, it's, you always have to fight and to get some sort of a common idea. But it's quite healthy to change that all the time because when you collaborate, usually the communication is, of course, going through many to one part. Yeah. So this guy, if, if, and if it's me, for example, doing in Brussels, you know, we just did two competitions with office, Kirsten Gales and David from Zealand. And when I'm there, like, I always have to think also what our, my two of partners say and how, I mean, it's not only me, you know, I'm also representing also them, you know, which is in a way schizophrenic. No, because you, know, you want to do something, but at the same time, you already hear the other say it. Ah. Yeah. 